create and build your chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. Um, recently, if you're using QuickBooks Online, then you've probably gotten the memo from Intuit. Um, originally, when they uh, set up their QuickBooks Online Advanced product, they imposed limitations on the other QuickBooks Online products, suggesting that if you have more than 250 accounts in your chart of accounts and more than 40 combined elements in your uh, classes and locations lists, that you were probably outgrowing those other products and it was time for a more robust um, uh, enterprise-level product, which is what QuickBooks Online Advanced was designed to be. Um, you might be looking, however, at the possibility of instead of sort of being forced to upgrade simply because you have a lot of accounts in the chart of accounts, you might be looking at consolidating these charts of accounts. And I think whether it was intended or not, uh, Intuit may be doing us a favor by forcing us to take a good hard look at the chart of accounts and make sure that it isn't overly detailed. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I was curious, so I Googled it. And I did kind of a Google image search on chart of accounts in uh, QuickBooks. And I found this article here on this website, um, which is a perfect example of what I think needs to be fixed in a lot of chart of accounts. So this is from a company that offers, uh, you know, it looks like they're a reseller of QuickBooks products. And they offer services, training, what that sort of thing. Um, and th what they're showing here scares me because it's a, it's a classic example of exactly what I think we can improve upon now dramatically. And like I said, inadvertently or not into it, maybe forcing us to do so here, which is that we have these overly detailed charts of accounts. Uh, look, for example, at um, their, uh, actually their payroll liabilities. I need to find that section. That's where it was really like extreme overkill. Uh, not in this example here. In this example, you can see payroll liabilities with this ridiculous amount of sub accounts, right? And all that does is lend itself to creating more mistakes and create clutter in your chart of accounts. And never once in my entire experience working as accountant, as an accountant, 20 years or so, um, have I ever found having this level of detail useful in the chart of accounts. If anything, like I said, it lends itself to making mistakes. So consolidate it. You only need one liability account for all payroll liabilities. Money is taken out of paychecks and then it's sent elsewhere to the federal government, to the state government. In most cases, your payroll company takes it all out at once anyway, and then they redistribute it to the appropriate authorities, whether it's state taxes or federal taxes or for a garnishment or some other thing. Bottom line is you have one payroll liabilities account. The money comes in from the paychecks and it goes out to the various entities, either as a lump sum or if you're recording them separately, fine. Either way, payroll liability should zero out at the end of each payroll period, except maybe if there are some quarterly payments that, uh, you know, don't go out with every pay period. So um, consolidate. Let's simplify these charts of accounts. And I'll give you a, another example using my bulletproof bookkeeping set of books here. I'm going to run the profit and loss for all dates because I have transactions in here that sort of span uh, a couple of years now. And I want to take a look at this travel and transportation account. Now, in the write-up, I explain that historically, and I'm guilty of this too, um, my travel expense section consisted of uh, a number of sub-accounts for airfare, for lodging, for transportation, for travel meals, and, you know, I could go on and on. That same website had a, an example similar, you know, where they had a lot of travel sub-accounts. Why? Why do we need it? Let the details stay neatly tucked away in the details. And here's what I mean. If I drill into this one account that I now have for travel and transportation, I can quickly and easily group this by name. And now I can easily tell what's parking, what's for airfare, what's parking, what's for lodging or hotel, and what's for transportation. In other words, you let the payees that are inside the details of that account tell you if you need to know how much you're spending in each of those sort of subcategories, right? So I highly recommend doing that. There are a lot of things like this that I think we can find on, the ch on charts of accounts of lots of companies that can easily be consolidated. And it's very possible, I would even argue very likely, that you could quickly get a lot of companies that are exceeding their limits um, well under that limit so that you don't have to upgrade if you don't feel that you're really at that level where an enterprise level product is in fact what's needed for you or for your client. So how do we create uh, accounts in the chart of accounts? Well, we're going to go here to the chart of accounts. It's in the accounting menu in QuickBooks Online. 
Creating an account is easy. We're just going to click New. And of course, the first thing you'll want to do is establish what's the account type. And you know, if you've ever watched any of my Bookkeeping Basics uh, videos, the most recent one is actually called Bookkeeping Basics with QuickBooks Online. I go over the fact that there are five basic account types, right? We have assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses, right? And then within that, we have lots of subtypes, right? So on the P&L, we have income and expenses, but we also have cost of goods sold, which technically is what's called contra income. Cost of goods sold, go contra, it goes against income, right? So cost of goods sold is technically classified as an income account type. Um, but we do have a separate category for cost of goods sold here when we're setting up the account type. So of course, what you'll want to do, if you're not familiar with it already, is sort of browse this list and find what seems like the most appropriate thing. And if you're a business owner who's not sure, well, that's why you have people like me out there. You just reach out to me and of course I get you the answers. Um, and of course, I'll take this opportunity to shamelessly plug my Bulletproof Bookkeeping with QuickBooks Online course. Uh, go through that course and you'll definitely have an understanding of what to do here, right? So we'll create the account type and then we're going to create the detailed type. Uh, depending on which account type you chose, those choices are going to change. So again, just find the most appropriate choice. Um, if, for example, you're really not sure for other current assets, there's a detail type also for other current assets. Do these first, by the way, because what you'll find, not in all cases, but in many cases, as I change the account type or detail type, it updates the name. And I've often made the mistake of naming the account only to get frustrated by the fact that it got renamed based on one of my choices here, which is, you know, just workflow wise, most of us think to do the name first um, into it, hint, hint. Um, most of us name it first. So again, it gets frustrating when all of a sudden the name I took the time to type in here gets overwritten and now I have to do it again. Um, so creating accounts is very easy. And remember what I said in the write-up, you really want to think in terms of the fact that as you create these accounts, you are very directly structuring what your balance sheet is going to look like and what your profit and loss is going to look like. So really think about that. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to determine whether or not and how to consolidate, what I've found the best way is not to look at the chart of accounts directly because this is just a long list of accounts and it's not clear to see where and how you can clean up the picture. I think you're better off running your balance sheet and your profit and loss. And for something like this, generally speaking, the profit and loss is where I think you're going to find the most opportunities to consolidate. That's where people tend to be overly detailed. We start creating expense accounts for everything. So oftentimes this is where you're going to find the opportunities to uh, consolidate things. And the way you're going to consolidate things is by merging accounts. So let's say I decide, you know, what, interest, expense, and loan fees, I really don't need to distinguish, right? So let's say I wanted to merge those two. Here's how you do it. Another thing I recommend so you don't lose your place, duplicate your tab. QuickBooks Online, as many of you know, is designed to work well in Chrome. Chrome makes it really easy to duplicate your tab. Safari does not. Anyway, um, let's go over to the chart of accounts. And what I want to do is I want to rename the uh, losing account to be the same as the, the surviving account. In other words, if I decide I want to just call it all interest expense, that's fine. Then I'm going to take the name interest expense and I, I copy it to my clipboard by highlighting it here and hitting control C. And then I can go in here and find loan fees. And we're going to edit that. And I'm going to paste that in. By copying and pasting, I'm preventing the chance of a typo, which would result in not merging the accounts. Let's see what happens when I hit save and close. I get this warning. The detail types need to match. So loan fees has a detail type of finance costs. Let's see what interest expense has. Uh, it's called interest paid. So let's just change loan fees real quick to interest paid. So it'll let me do this. So the detail type we're going to change to interest paid. Save. Let's go back here. It's still highlighted. Control C. And then we'll edit this account once again. And now it's going to confirm do I want to merge these two? If I say yes, I will now be left with one surviving account called interest expense. Right? And if I go back to this report and refresh, 
Now all I have is interest expense with everything in it. Now let's go the other way. Let's say I decide, nope, you know what? I have everything in interest expense, and even though this doesn't serve the purpose of trying to consolidate to avoid hitting those limits, let's just say I've decided that it does make sense, because in truth it does, to keep the loan fees in a separate account. Then let's go into here, and now we're just going to create a new account and call it loan fees. Right, and I can do it right in the transaction. Okay, and it's going to be an expense. And we had finance costs here. Save and close. This was basically a fee that was reduced from the amount that was loaned to us, so it was taken right out of the deposit, and we're calling that loan fees. Let's hit save and close. And notice now it's no longer included in the interest expense, which is the account detail that we're looking at here. And back to my P&L report, I'm now back to having two separate accounts, one for interest expense and one for loan fees. So in terms of creating and building your chart of accounts, it's important to know how to go both ways, right? How to expand what's in one account into two or more new accounts and how to take two or more existing accounts and consolidate them by merging them into a single surviving account. Now you know how to do it both ways. That's important. So what I'd encourage you to do is look through your own chart of accounts, run your balance sheet, run your profit and loss, and look for areas where you have more detail than you really need. It's not a question of right or wrong here. It's just a question of chiseling down your financial reports to make them easier to read, especially when you know that as I've demonstrated, you can take an account like travel and transportation and drill in to get the details if and when the need should arise. And I found over the years that it's actually not that often that the need arises for that kind of thing. Having broader, more general categories that still give a good picture of the financial performance and the financial picture of the company on a given date, as in the balance sheet, and over a period of time, as in the P&L, that's what's important. That's what's useful. Think about it like this. At the end of the year, when you're getting ready to file your taxes, or maybe you've just filed them, I've just recently been looking at chata.ai, um, so I can create dashboards to help me analyze what the numbers looked like now that I've filed the returns for the year. And then, of course, I'm looking, like, I'm looking at that in comparison to the current year to see how am I doing this year so far compared to how I did last year. I want to think in terms of doing those kinds of analyses. And if I have 150, if I have 250 accounts in my chart of accounts, it probably is overkill in most cases. And it's going to make the analysis, especially if you're trying to think in terms of a pie chart that shows the mix of expenses and how much money went into each. Imagine a, a pie chart on a small screen being divided up 250 ways. It gets ridiculous. So they're probably doing us a favor by forcing us to look at this and forcing us to look for ways to consolidate. Most of you probably have a lot more detail than you ever need, or more importantly, than you ever use on your chart of accounts. So as always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, reach out to me. You know how to find me. I'm easy to find. I'm always around. I'm always alive. I'm always awake and on the web. So reach out to me and ask me your questions. Uh, sign up for Bulletproof Bookkeeping or QuickBooks Online. It's truly the most comprehensive resource on the internet as far as bookkeeping and accounting courses go um, and ongoing resources. So that's it, my friends. As always, I hope you learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.